could have gone last week, but the, the, the hurricane that short changed us kind of um, sent us to this week instead. So today I've got some very illustrious guests here. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to introduce to you Michael Fortune, who is, I wouldn't even describe him as an artist, he's a, he's a folklorist, historian, artist, come everything, you know? And he loves to cross those barriers and, and break the, the shape down and, and, and stack it back up again. And so, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Michael Fortune, who will launch tonight's exhibition by Simon Bates, Labourers Colleges. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for coming along. Even. Listen, I, I, what, what can I say at all? I was delighted uh, to get the text for yourself, right? Um, I was delighted to, to, when Andy sent me that text a couple of weeks ago, I said, this is, this is brilliant, right? And it was brilliant for so many so many reasons for me. I could have prepared a speech, but I didn't. It was, it was brilliant for so many reasons because it's, this is something that needed to be done, right? Um, it's such something I've seen for years in, around County Wexford. You've seen it, obviously, it's called you right, that's why, you, why you've done it. Um, I think this is just the start of something as far as I can see, right? Um, uh, I also have, don't mind actually, to be in a space like this, I'm going to come back to the, to the cottage in a second. To be here, actually, is lovely as well. It's, in, in the true sense of a hedge school, it's hard to find. But you know what? That's what's <laughs> really, that's what's really yeah. quite special about it, right? right? You never remember, you know, sometimes that's what's really nice about something, right? Yes. You, you, work, you work your way to get something, and you get, you get there, and you go, Jesus, that's nice, right? right? <laughs> and then you go, well, I'll tell anyone how to keep it to myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you hear it there. So this is great to see this kind of work in this kind of space. And even when I was driving down here, Simon, right? I was spotting these, I was spotting them, even when I was driving into the houses here, right? And it's obviously sparks, sparks at the new, it sparks something, it sparks in me, me to, to want to be here because my grandmother grew up among these houses, my father grew up in these houses, uh, my mother grew up among these houses. A, a string of all our relations up around Ballygarrick to Muckridge all grew up in these farm labourers' houses. Right? And I'm calling them houses because, and, and, they're, and they're cottages. It was, it's, a, it's, a, it's a queer one, there's a big backstory to these, to these and as you know too, too well as well, there was a whole class of people whose stories were never told, whose stories were uh, often forgotten about. Um, and I always found, I, I spend most of my time collecting folk or around meeting people, and how we all are alive. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I love going to meeting people sometimes are, I always, they, someone said, well, we need to go talk to someone who's a local postmistress or a local school teacher or a local priest or a local guard. And there are sometimes the people I avoid, because sometimes I can go to people here whose stories have never, it's always driven me for the last 20 years, that's why it's supposed to be driven me for collecting stories and folk and beliefs and traditions. Is our device that people didn't, were never told before. And when I see these houses, I think of hundreds and thousands of voices that were probably never heard or told. These houses reared 10, 12 fat children, you know, were two rooms upstairs, two rooms downstairs. I could walk through them. When I stand them, I can walk through them. As I can walk through my grandmother's one, you walk in the hall door, you go into the left, it was, it was your granny's house anyway. She left she had the dresser over here on the left hand side and she had her fire over here. I remember it was an open fire when we were children. And he went into the other room which she used as a kitchen, which she never really used, everything was done in that room. That was a kind of a, a fancy room but stuff was left in you know, I mean, no one ever used in her sense. But still it was but her many children were reared in that house. Um, and even to walk up the stairs, and you know this in the coal hole, the cubby hole. Anyone who's lived, grew up in one of these houses will know these spaces. You'll know the diameters, you'll know the scale, you know the height and ceiling, you'll know all those particular things about those houses. Um, you walk upstairs, you, I, I know that the May altar was always on the top steps, on the height, there was a little lobby window over to the left hand side, you'll be probably here, and these a little small lobby window. And that's where the May altar was always kept, at a height, as a protection. I saw the same tradition in Newfoundland, this idea of, like, of the height, of, the, of, the, of something religious being up on the height, and the little two rooms, and one in here, right, and one straight ahead. The Danny is broken on these houses, yeah? yeah? You know, do you, do you know are you walking through one with me, yeah? So you're walking through these houses, right? One thing I like, stairs had a covered door, like a covered door. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, you kept stuff. So. My mother always said the neighbors keep hens in it, set hen in it. Because you set, set, you know, years ago, people had a, a fancier dresser to get the hen in the dresser. But Maggie said, you always keep the hen set the hen inside. Um, other things, when the floors were always uh, concrete, mass concrete, whatever, right? And even people remember, even Granny, I remember Granny at home polishing her floor with that kind of, uh, sort of, kind of a polish in between. Yeah? And even the little holes in the thing where you break hazelnuts. This time of year, probably a couple of weeks ago, you'd be taking hazelnuts. And it'd be little dips in the ground where you crack hazelnuts as children. Where herns were roasted over the, you know, you know, there, there, there's so many memories of these houses. There, was, there wasn't a cow patch floor, was it? Yeah. I've heard stories of people having cow patch floors in these as well. Right. Well, 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 do you mean like cow dung? Yeah. 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 
I know the granny and the mammy and them used to collect. This is, I remember, I, I, for years, this, this is the thing about not asking. We don't, we, sometimes we assume we know everything about the particular history, or, but then there's loads of other stuff, because we know loads of other stories that exist, but, and they exist, but then we only find out because we ask. But if we don't ask, we never find out, right? So one of them was my mother said, she's always beginning their job during the summer. This is North and South Wexford, all over Wexford. <laughs> they go out and take cow shit, she said, out in the yard and take cow shit, right? Turn cow shit, bring them in, cook them on the open fire, because they cooked on the open fire. This is not 18th century Ireland, this is 1950s Wexford, right? <laughs> this is the thing, we never forget this as well, right? This is where, 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 where we're coming from, and where that story is coming from. And they would use them for, for, to, for to cook on open fires. I have a in my mother's house, the lads cooking rashers on the open fire, right? Um, and people, that, again, usually it's the people who came back had the cameras to take photographs, and the local people never had them, didn't have them. You, you wouldn't be interested in documenting your own lives, you know? You wouldn't have the facilities to even do it. So I never had the cow dung on the, on the ground, but definitely in, in the fire for cooking. Mm -hmm. They were calling them bolions, boshons, different names, and different with a bone, or just cow dung or cow shite. It's, 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 it's the old term for it. And my grandmother, again, at home down in Ballygarrett, they used to mix cow dung with this, the slack from the bowls, the, bowl, the coal that came in from Wales, and build bricks at the back of the fires for extra heat to radiate out, right? Um, so those houses are incredible. I lived the house in 2010 at home up in, up in Ballandagan, and I borrowed, I, I, the design of it, this is high forehead, which these houses have this one and a half story, and the gables are similar. There's three gables in mine are four, and it went with that same kind of aesthetic, that same kind of line, right? Um, and that spot is all over, you like yourselves, spot is all over County, County Wexford. Um, it's, um, I could talk for hours about it, you know. Jeez, they're, they're, they're incredible. There's, there's, such, there's such stories within these homes. I, I couldn't help as well sign looking around. I was telling you earlier, I love the hook cap when they wanted the photograph here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's like, story there. Absolutely. And you usually can see Carol and Jacks are now, you know. And those houses as well, they had, you, again, as far as I can remember, our one was, was uh, the, the big side of the back. Yeah. yeah. Big side of the back, right? Um, and, um, uh, the, 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 the little gate, Jesus, I remember even going as children going for a weasel on the corner, the back of, gra of, gra of, back of granny one, an outdoor toilet as well. No, mm. granny, granny didn't get a toilet at home, and our hard one until the mid, mid to late 90s. That's right, she was an outdoor toilet until, until then. Like, again, this is not 19th century stuff, you know, this is like, only relatively not, not that long ago. Mm. The other thing, I've there's lovely things as well, they always came with uh, the, 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 the acre, right? Mm. right? And the granny never called them the park. Yeah. Did you call it a park? The park yeah. This is now, that's funny. Yeah. Most people have had those called in the park, and I'm trying to figure it out when a friend of mine from the Gumption, we're trying to figure out if it's come from the world, old out for a park, was it for a field, or was it a word when the house came down, it was just called your park. And no matter from, from, from Ballygard, from the Scarlet, to here, no, I've heard this word, I'll get out in the park. Mm -hmm. uh, Cox of Hale kept in the park. There were ways of making free you grow your spuds. You know? Vegetables. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were ways of keeping the family sufficient for the best, the best that they could, they had nothing. Mm -hmm. And believe me, people had nothing. I've recorded neighbours and family. Like my grandmother moved into her house in the 1940s. She said she was in an older house and she said she couldn't pay the rent and she said, get out. She said, we got out before we could, we were thrown out. And they went to live in a two room house down in the bog and then they got one of these houses and reared the rare, rare family in one of these houses. So it's a huge story here. And all of us were the and, and like a lot of people who came out of these houses left were the heck off. And it suited people from the heck off because we're going up to England or that's where it was cheaper, England or Scotland or Wales, maybe that was it if you went to Dublin. Uh, you didn't go to America or Australia if you didn't have the money. You know, if you're lucky, you, you, went, you went there. So it's a huge, big backstory. But then education and those other things change and level and all those things kind of help level up. I know I'm rambling on here a little bit, but there's a ma massive story. I can't help but look around. There's gorgeous differences here. I've noticed your differences with your peers, round peers when you come down here. I've noticed your gates as well. The gates are catching the eye. I wonder was it that same guy making the same call on the same contract? Yeah. Look at sometimes the different blacksmiths in the bands of my part of the county, there you go to, or maybe this was a centralised one. There's a huge story here for you, and you know it yourself, for, for extra work. I'm sure the documents are inside Wexford County Council, I'm sure. Um, you know, there, there's so much more, and there's also so much more as well, but inside the houses, to me, that's, which is interesting as well, the visual here of these all together is, is fantastic, right? Um, but also the visual inside, I know that some of them had a recess for a dresser, they went in on the left hand side, the back wall, they usually had one uh, thing there, so there's loads of peculiar things. Um, it's, it's just, I think it's, uh, it's fantastic. I'm going to go home now in the car and think I should have said, I should have said that. Well, <laughs> 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 I, I, I think I've said enough. But listen, I, I can't, I can't uh, commend you enough for the work you've done. I think it's brilliant. Um, and I, I really, really mean it. I think it's a huge story and it's a huge, uh, it's a huge start. But it's really, you know what? It's a really great story for County Wexford. These are very particular to County Wexford, right? And that's what's really, really important. And one thing I, I, I said, I will, this, this is one thing that's in the back of my mind. 
was that sometimes you were getting directions. I only got at me in December, I was driving up through Albert, I was getting directions, and someone said, Oh, yeah, where do you live? Goes to fourth house. So, one, two, three, and I went to the fifth house. But do you know what house didn't count? Cottage. Mm. Cottage was never counted as a house, and I've seen that being done. It never counted as a house in the country, right? Because it wasn't, it, was all, it, was all, it wasn't a proper house, right? So, um, it's a proper house now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not going to try and compete with the <laughs> storytelling abilities, <laughs> but uh, I'd just really like to thank Michael for taking the time to come down, and I'm sure you've got a wealth of knowledge to, but I'd love to pick your brain about, about the houses. Um, we had a show in Dublin in the Architectural Archive in the summer and I met a film, filmmaker up there so he's interested in doing a documentary about these so it would be great to, to get you on board or something like that as well. I'd just like to thank everyone for coming down, taking time out this evening and Andy who does so much work in the background. Thanks for asking me to, to put on the show here. I think it's a great, great venue for it. And Andy does so much work for you know art and community and he's a great musician too. <laughs> um, yeah. Just thank, thanks everybody for coming down and I hope you enjoyed the show. Yeah. Great.